Good morning. Try one more time. Good morning. Excellent. I am running about, I think I have 931, so surely please forgive me. I'm uh, one minute behind. Uh, wondering if uh, Pastor Olivier will open us in prayer this morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads. Good and gracious Father, we come before you with thanksgiving. It is a day that we celebrate. It is a day that is glorious and that you have made. It is a month of thanksgiving, and may we not just pick one day, but may we rejoice in every day that you have given us. As we gather this day, may we ever be reminded that we have much to, for which to give thanks, many who surround us, and many who offer their gifts and graces. May your spirit be with our conversation. May, our, may your love be our guide, and may your light ever show the way. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. It doesn't take but a second to conjure up some images of being thankful. I'm very grateful for the auxiliary and the the sale of the bazaar, $6,200, I believe, at least, um, maybe more. Um, phenomenal. What a great day that was, a tremendous amount of work. We have um, another thing to be thankful for, and that is your generosity this time of the year with the gift fund. I know Dr. Doug Tuggle has handed uh, over the, the gift fund over to Fred and Olive, and I'm not sure, is Fred here this morning? Fred. Would you like to say a word? Please. know if I brought it. Okay. Good morning. I am Fred Durand and as this year's co-chair of the Employee Holiday Gift Fund with Olive Thomas, I would like to thank those staff members who help us to make the Holiday Gift Fund work. They include Ben Burks, Julie Dellinger, Mary James, Beth Herndon, Carter Hanna, Julie Goodman, and Teresa Walco, and our apologies to anyone I forgot. Also, there are some residents who have been very instrumental in making this gift fund work. We are heavily indebted to Doug Tuggle, who followed the footsteps of Harold Glass, and who left us many complete and invaluable files. And a sincere thank you for the help provided by workers that have included Margaret Coles, Pat Howard, Gene Rosendahl, Ruth Schott, and this year include Sandy Thomas and Carol Danielson. As announced at the last Residence Council meeting, this year's collection period will run from November 15 through November 29. In past years, there was a celebration at the end of the process where the employees would receive their gifts, and we residents could thank the employees in person. We are planning to have such a party this year on Friday, December the 3rd. When residents see employees after that date, please make it a special point to say thank you to them. Not that you can't thank them at any time and all the time. Thank you on behalf of Ola Thomas. A couple of notes. The, the first is that there was a service this morning, or there is a service this morning for Calda Colony. I believe a transportation was provided. A number of residents wanted to go to that. We wanted to make sure that we were recording today's town hall. Today's town hall will be shown again tomorrow, November the 6th, at 11 and at 5. It will be shown Sunday the 7th at 3 o'clock, and then Monday at, at 7 o'clock. I believe that's correct, right, Teresa? So there will be multiple showings in case you just had so much fun this morning here, if you're here, and you want to watch it over and over again, um, or if your friends are other, otherwise uh, occupied, uh, you can make sure that they have opportunity to see it. A couple of notes, uh, Dr. Teresa Chun 
Uh, you all, it was mentioned at uh, resident council on Monday. She will no longer uh, be with us as of Sunday. She is transferring to California to be closer to family. And so she will be moving out on Monday. There is a gathering today from three to four. Is that correct, Julie? Did I get that right? Where is Julie? Oh, you're usually on the front row. Uh, you're my right hand. Um, three to four uh, in the community room. Uh, so if any of you want to stop by and wish Dr. Chun to wish Teresa uh, all the best and let her know how much she was loved here, um, you can do so today from three to four. I think that's a nice opportunity. A couple other notes. Um, we sent out the rate letter. Uh, I believe that went out a week ago. Um, any questions have been coming in. We will have a meeting on December the 8th to just talk about the rates, uh, to talk about finances as we go into 2022, what 2021 looked like. Uh, Gary, our CFO, will be uh, working on that with me. So there will be a, a dedicated meeting just for that on December the 8th. And you may be thinking, why are we waiting that long? What we sent you was what we think is going to be approved, but we're, we have to make sure that the board approves it, which will be, uh, I think, uh, December 2nd, I believe, is the board meeting. So we want to make sure that we have the absolute final uh, before we sit down with you. I think a lot of it is, is pretty clear. The, the cost of food has gone uh, skyrocketed, the wages have gone uh, extremely high. Uh, we've had to pay for a lot more pandemic. I mean, when Gary and I sat down last year, uh, we were naive. We thought the pandemic would be over second half of, of 2021. Uh, here we are at the end of 2021 and we're still in it and we're still having to pay uh, for various things. Uh, in particular, whenever we have an outbreak, um, our costs go up because then we have to provide tests for all the staff, all the residents, whether you're vaccinated or not. We have to do it twice a week, if not more. And we have to do that until we get uh, 14 days without a positive a case. So it is very expensive to be running through that. Not, no, and then when we're in that kind of a case, we all have to don on uh, higher uh, PPE and we're throwing uh, on all kinds of things. So the costs just go up anytime we have an outbreak. So inflation, wage prices, uh, the, the nursing shortage, we've had some agency that's really driven up um, our costs and, and then the pandemic, that's uh, really hit us. So we'll talk to you more about that. Continue to sharpen your pencil. I see uh, Dr. Um, Bob back there, he's, uh, he's sharpening his pencil. Uh, so sharpen your pencil and, and come prepared. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have uh, at that time. And if you're burning uh, with questions and itching now, we'll be happy to work with you. You can contact Beth or you can contact me uh, and we'll be happy to talk to you. Um, but again, the rate increases went in um, and it's 3%. Um, another note, somewhat pig piggybacking on that, I've had some, some questions from residents and from staff about masks, um, feeling like, some folks are feeling like the Delta variant is going down. When can we take off our masks? You know, we had a reprieve there for, what, a day and a half maybe in June or July where we took off our masks. Um, when can we do that again? We are watching and monitoring our positivity rates in the area and um, we will communicate that to you all um, when we feel like it's safe. We've done a great job so far We've not had any outbreak in IL. One of the things I do want to remind you is we, we have had multiple people in independent living that have been exposed over the last month. Um, and those exposures, uh, some have been exposed and have had their masks on. And that means that they've only had to quarantine for five days and then get a test. Um, and, and others have been exposed and not had their mask on and they've had to quarantine for 10 days. Quarantining stinks, and that's an understatement. I would say some other things stronger, but this is not appropriate, and Pastor Olivier is looking at me uh, and shooting daggers at me. Yeah, uh, Jesus is looking right at me right here. <laughs> so 
please wear your masks. It is important. I know that we are all getting tired. Um, I, it is very easy for us to get complacent, but continue to, to do the things and be disciplined. We've, we've uh, done very well, and I'm very, very pleased with how well we have done. Just want to continue doing that. I just wanted to remind you about that. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Jessica White, our assisted living and memory care administrator. Jessica? Good morning. Um, just want to talk a little bit about um, activities. That's our big focus in assisted living, um, especially now and through the holidays. Um, so Taylor, who you all met, I think, a couple of uh, town halls ago, she is actually out on her maternity leave officially, so she will be out through the end of the year. Um, and we have hired an activities coordinator. Her name is Vicki Grubb. Unfortunately, she could not be here today for me to introduce you all to her, but um, she will be with us even after Ta uh, Taylor's maternity leave. So um, she'll, you'll be seeing her around. So uh, we're happy to have her. And then we also have Betty Nevin still here with us, and she'll be um, working quite a few more hours than she usually would with Taylor out. But um, So you'll be seeing her a lot. But just really excited um, adding her and... Um, adding Vicki will allow us to just have a lot more going on in assisted living. So really excited. Um, as always, we love having visitors and want you all to come over and visit with our residents um, and just see them. And we're excited for the holidays, get ready to decorate and celebrate, um, especially after the last couple of years. So thank you. Pastor Olivier, would you like to come and share? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Natalie. I jumped over Natalie. Sorry. See, you, you put the stink eye right on me, and it just uh, threw me off my game. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, um... I've only been over here a few times for Town Hall. I, I want to introduce myself again. I'm Natalie Weiniger. I'm the administrator over at the uh, Nursing and Rehab Center. Um, wanted to give a few updates regarding construction. We are making progress with construction despite the challenges with um, supply chain, na nationwide supply chain issues. We are looking to open our new memory care support center in uh, what was previously intensive assisted living in early December. Um, as we make progress, we are um, educating all of our staff with our newly developed, well, it's a nationwide, uh, world-renowned um, dementia program. It's called a Positive Cared Approach, uh, developed by an occupational therapist, Tipa Snow. Um, we're so excited to be able to use this program as we feel like we can better uh, uh, work with our residents that are living with dementia or Alzheimer's in a more specialized program and uh, place. I'd like to introduce Alex Holcomb. Alex, would you mind standing up just oh, first? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Alex, you want to come up? Yeah. Continue on the <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot we were live streaming. <laughs> yeah, Alex Holcomb, he joined us in October. Um, he'll be our new memory care coordinator. Um, Alex has a strong background in healthcare. He's worked as an EMT, a CNA, and then received his LPN license in 2012. Um, he has uh, had previous experience working in memory cares, um, but also has worked as a, a travel nurse in many different locations in underserved areas. Um, Alex is a certified trainer with Tipa Snow's Positive Care Approach, so we're really looking forward to having him involved in educating all of our staff, and hopefully we can expand those services, not just within our memory support, but also within the nursing and rehab center and uh, throughout campus. Um, his training experience will be such a great asset to our community. We're very excited to, to get started. Um, so only in just a few weeks, we'll see some big changes happening. If you have been over at our building, you'll notice that we have a lot of construction going on in the front of the building. You'll notice that we have, uh, we, were gonna be, we are going to be switching entrances in hopefully about a week. So um, right now we're utilizing our NRC entrance, whereas in about a week we'll be moving to the Fishwick entrance and uh, starting construction on the what was previously unit one. All right. Any questions related to construction? All right. Thank you. Sometimes it's hard to stand up here, isn't it, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> 
Now it's Pastor Olivier's turn. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. We meet again. Um, to piggyback on Natalie's uh, announcement, we are going to begin again our Alzheimer's support group. We're going to gather on Monday for an initial introductory uh, meeting at 2 o'clock on Monday. So, balladeers, we're going to be we're going to stop officially at 10 of. Um, I've already worked you hard enough, so it's, it'll be good. Um, so the, um, the Alzheimer's support group, and we're also going to expand that to dementia support and other support as we go along, but we'll do this initial gathering on Monday at uh, 2 o'clock in the um, Mountain View Room uh, to, begin our pro to begin a process of gathering again together. Uh, over COVID, it was very difficult for us to gather in any way. And um, the Alzheimer's Association tried to say, you know, encouraged us to gather on, on Zoom and virtually. It's very difficult to do that in this environment when the person you love, the person who you are, you are with, um, is sitting right with you. So the support that we're, we're going to begin again uh, uh, um, in-person gathering for Alzheimer's and also uh, dementia support, and we'll expand that, but this will be an initial to see where we want to go and how we want to do that. Do that. So that will be on Monday at 2 o'clock in the Mountain View Room in Assisted Living. Um, in November, we had our All Saints Vespers on Wednesday night, and we counted 49. 49. of our residents that we said goodbye to. So we celebrated them and uh, we continue to watch and to love on each other and to celebrate the, the, the lives and souls that are with us always. Um, this Monday, our men's Bible study will be gathering at 9 a.m. for our bre monthly breakfast. We will be going to Famous Toastery. Um, so gentlemen, uh, talk with Teresa. Uh, if you are, it is limited to how many? 12. What did I say? Monday. Tuesday. Sorry, I'm glad we have somebody who has a brain today. Um, it is Tuesday at 9 a.m. and we're already full, so thank you very much. Um, I may have to run behind the van, so, okay, okay, fine. Um, th Thanksgiving Eve Vespers are 7 p.m. on, at, on, on the 24th of uh, this month. Um, we, get to, we get to come together, and I encourage all of us in assisted living and independent living to come and celebrate Thanksgiving. On the 28th at 5.02, 5.02 because that's sunset, we, we begin the Festival of Lights Hanukkah with the lighting of the Hanukkah out in the lobby. All, all are invited and welcome. Um, we are gearing up for Christmas and all the things that happen, all the holidays that are in this season. Let us be ever mindful of the thanks we have for the gifts and graces we have, but also let us recognize the family that we are not with, um, and let us also gra take every opportunity to see family in this time. Bless you and thank you. Allison Williams, the Environmental Services Director, uh, is here today, but she had some other duties to take care of, so she asked me to pass this along. Uh, pest control, snake away treatment was completed yesterday throughout all of campus, and we are working with U.S. Lawns to provide ground cover plant that uh, around the entrances that help act as snake repellents. Um, so we are working on that. Um, this is two years in a row when it's gotten cool. Um, that we've had little critters, not big ones, but little ones, but they're not wanted, right, Janice? <laughs> they are not wanted. So we are uh, trying to scurry them away, um, and Allison is working hard on that. The other uh, thing that Allison asked me to do was to let you know that the hall representatives, uh, she's requesting the hall reps to reach out and schedule hall meetings with her uh, to hear any so that she can hear any concerns and to answer any questions that may be going on in your areas. So you hall reps, um, reach out to Allison and she will be, um, she would welcome the opportunity to come and meet with um, folks on your area. That is pretty much it, except I do want to bring up 
Gary Ventola, our Chief Financial Officer, and he's going to say a word. Gary? Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Ben said, my name is Gary Ventola. Some, some of you have met me, some of you have not. Uh, I am the CFO for Virginia Lutheran Homes. I kind of want to piggyback a little bit on what Ben said earlier about the uh, rate letters that you received uh, about a week ago. Um, as Ben had alluded to, there's, we're in the process of finalizing the 2022 budget. We are waiting for uh, our board meeting on December 2nd to make that final, and I can definitely share a lot more detailed information of, the, uh, of those numbers and where we project and so forth for 2022. Uh, but for right now, I can't, can't quite share that to you until the board approves it. But what I wanted to do was, here, was that I'm here to discuss just, just very shortly some general and global uh, terms about the 22 rate letter increase that you received. Um, first, the, uh, the rate letter stated for independent living that there was a, a 3% increase for 2022. For private pay residents, so these are people who didn't come in through the life care contract area. Uh, the, life, uh, the private pay residents for assisted living, memory care, and the NRC, they saw a rate increase of about 3.8 to 4.2, depending upon what unit and uh, level of care and so forth. That's fairly consistent to uh, the rate increase of uh, this current year for 2021. Uh, life care residents, just so you all know, if you do move to another level of care, that 3% stays in place. So whatever your rate is for 2022, whatever level of care that you move to, whether it's assisted living, the NRC, you continue to pay the same amount. That's what a life plan community is all about. So what I did want to do is just touch a few bases on what is driving this slightly higher than uh, normal percentage increase. Uh, some of those increases are based on inflation. We all, we all hear about it on the news. Uh, we all heard, as Ben alluded to, uh, the labor shortages across the board. It's not just nursing, but it's trucking. And, and everywhere you look, there's help wanted science everywhere, which is also leading to supply chain issues, which is also helping the inflation issue and driving up prices because of shortages in all kinds of product, whether it's food, materials, uh, and, and, and Christmas gifts and everything that they're now talking about. So. Here at Brandon Oaks, the top two expenses are labor and food. And as you can tell, again, those two items are always in the news about shortages and rising prices. Sodexo, who is our food provider and a lot of our upper management uh, is tied to Sodexo, they have forecasted for 2022 an increase in food prices of at least 5% uh, across the board. That's on average. We are getting rate letter increases from Hershey and a few other, other vendors that are talking 12 to 15 percent increases. So again, we're starting to already hear about it, and these are increases that haven't even happened yet that have, we've already seen increases so far this, this year. Uh, the, other, uh, the other challenge, of course, is labor. Uh, first and overall, the labor shortage and the longer time it takes to, to fill those positions is, is a challenge. Secondly, uh, is the rate increases. You're hearing minimum $15 wages and so forth. Here at Brandon Oaks, just to give you a perspective of where those numbers are, about 18 months ago, beginning of 2020, the average frontline worker at Brandon Oaks, so that would be your care providers, your housekeepers, maintenance, and so forth, they averaged about $13.15 per hour. Move the clock forward 18 months to today, the average person at Brandon Oaks is now making $17.65. That's a 34% increase in wages in an 18 month time span. So again, has a, it's great to them. Yeah, I, I, I applaud them for, you know, that them providing the service and them demanding it, but it does take a toll financially uh, on the organization and, and organizations across the United States. Normally we project a two and a half percent increase in labor and so forth. That's been kind of the norm. That's the way everything is 
been kind of working the last eight to ten years. The last year and a half and so forth has not been, I would consider, normal. So to try to hold those two and a half percent increase for next year is, or for 2022, is going to be difficult. Uh, not impossible, but it's going to be difficult. But if, but I'm probably going to see, we're all probably going to see probably a, a labor increase, a wage increase of more in the range of five to 10%. That's, that's my guess for, for next year. There's, other one, there's another indicator of where inflation is. A lot of people are saying it's not that bad, and some people say it is. One of the ones that I wanted to, to point out as, a, as a, a really good inflation indicator, which probably all of you have heard about in the last couple of weeks, was Social Security came out with their cost of living adjustment, or they call it COLA. Uh, they increased or announced the increase for 2022 to be 5.9%. That's the second largest increase in 40 years. So it just gives a perspective of where we are, where prices are, where inflation is in general, and so forth. So if I can flip the page here. So how does this, uh, how does this affect your rate, and how does this compare? So again, I just wanted to give you a little, little history. So again, for 2022, we're, we're, uh, we have put out a 3% increase. In 2015 and 2016, we had a 2.95% increase, so just about 3%. In 2017 and 2018, we had a 2.75% increase. In 2019, we actually did have a 3% increase. And these past two years, in 20 and 21, was 2.5%. If you put it all together over the last eight years, we've averaged 2.8%. So we're not that far off of the 3% increase. Again, going back those eight years, inflation was not looking like the way it is. Prices are, were not quite as extreme as, as they are today, and we're certainly not seeing the labor shortage back in those years compared to what we're seeing today. Uh, another perspective is uh, not that we want to follow the decision making and the trends and so forth of other senior living communities in the area, but I can tell you that uh, many, not all, but many of the other kind of competitors, senior living communities within the Roanoke Valley area are averaging around 5 to 6% increase. So we are below, below the competitors in the area, and there's multiple reasons behind that why we believe that we don't have to be that high uh, compared to them. So a lot of hard work has gone into these tough decisions, uh, creating the annual budget, and those decisions is why the residents uh, will pay for the services for next year. Our mission is to provide a caring and safe and affordable living environment, no matter what level of care all of you residents might be at. I believe that, I believe that we have met those goals by providing an outstanding service, high quality of care at all levels, and an affordable price. Uh, as Ben had mentioned uh, earlier, there will be a kind of a town hall type meeting on December 8th that 1030, I believe it is, uh, where I'll go over the budget. Again, the budget will be approved on December 2nd. On the December 8th meeting, I, I'll certainly be able to go over some of the highlights of, of what consists in that budget and, of course, answer any, any questions. Uh, but as Ben also said, uh, because it's still proposed and it's not official, I can't really go into any details about, about what's in uh, or what's proposed in the budget. But, uh, but I will be able to provide that to you, to all of you on December 8th. Uh, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I've got just a few things here that I want to go over. Um, to start off with, a uh, big shout out to everybody involved with the bazaar. Um, I was in contact with the Goodwill to pick up the remaining stuff um, the week before, and we did not know what size truck that we would have to have to get it out. So I came in that Monday morning to realize I probably could have got everything that was left on a pickup truck. So again, 
huge shout out. That was just massive, massive uh, moving of furniture and selling. Y'all does such a great job. Uh, anytime I have a uh, yard sale at my house, I'm going to get y'all to come over, please. All right, let's move into the time of the year. It's uh, getting cold. We got to winterize the building, make sure we're prepared for everything uh, that could be thrown at us. Uh, snow, ice, uh, trees falling, limbs falling, stuff like that. We've been, I've been working with Brian Haynes with uh, make sure we have everything in, in place, in order, everything's running and is ready to go, looks good. Uh, to piggyback off that as far as the trees. Uh, we have five major trees that are dead, that are potential hazards. Uh, I met with U.S. Lawns Wednesday uh, and looked over all of them, got a game plan for them, and hopefully by the end of this month, uh, they will be removed. The smaller trees, uh, I've put on the back burner around the building, different locations until this spring. We're looking at doing a large uh, scale removal of lower trees, uh, big canopies being cut back, open up the grassy areas, get more sun so we can have more grass and look a little cleaner. Like I said, we're gonna put that off till spring and address it then. Um, fuel tank, Please bear with me. Uh, it's still a work in progress. I think I'm on the right path now. Hopefully I can have it out of here. Uh, inspections and sprinklers and alarms. We are doing the last village home today, uh, tying in the smoke detectors, uh, which is in perfect time because we have BSC uh, coming in next week to do all of our alarm system inspections. I'm gonna go over the list real quick. Tuesday morning, 11-9 of 2021 will be Pinecrest. Testing the fire alarms, including standalone devices. We'll be activating the horns, but it should only be about five minutes per building, per location, hopefully. Uh, bear with them. They don't mean to make that much noise, but they have to check each and every one. Tuesday, the same day, 11-9, uh, they will do the cottages. Same thing. They will be testing all the alarms, everything uh, involved in it, and they will uh, include the horns in those also. Wednesday, 11-10, 2020, would be Pine Ridge. Um, again, it'd be all the standalone devices, alarms, and we'll activate the horns. Same day, Wednesday, 11-10, 2021, will be the village homes. That's where they're going to come in and test, make sure that we've done everything that we were supposed to on them smoke detectors. And if it doesn't go right, we'll blame Brian Phelps. Don't tell him I told y'all. All right, to fi finish it up, that would be 11-11 Thursday, uh, which would be our quarterly sprinkler inspections. Y'all shouldn't see anything with that that's more internal in closets, riser systems, but uh, you might see water out in the parking lot where they had to open the system up, make sure all that's going. Uh, the last thing I have is to talk about work orders. I get a lot of phone calls. Uh, in his day's, day's time, oh, ask me for this, asking me for that. It's not an issue, but please oh, place a work order for that in the, with the front desk. If you do not feel like that the work order has been processed or it's not going well, please reach out to me at that point. I have so much going on. I tried doing everything that I can for all oh, the residents here. I don't want something to get lost and because I didn't, wasn't able to write it down. So that was the whole reason for this. Uh, again, please make sure you post the, place the work order and feel free to reach out to me about how that's going. With that being said, does anybody have anything for grounds maintenance on that side? All right, no questions. Can you repeat that, please? Why they start so early on Monday? We have only eight, seven parking lots corridor. They come in at 7 o'clock, so they come in at 8 o'clock. 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 They come in at 8 o'clock
So why does oh, U.S. loans come in so early at the A7? Oh, in what room in particular? Just anywhere, Just anywhere around A7? I was going to direct them straight to your room at 6, but... <laughs> no, what I was meaning by that is I'll make sure they're three miles away from your room by the end. Okay, I will address that with U.S. loans. Unfortunately, they do have to start early, but they do not have to start against the building that early. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, I will call them first thing uh, as soon as I get done here. Is there any other questions, concerns? All right, I'll turn it back over to Ben. Thank you all so much. Thank you, yes, sir. And those fire, fire alarm tests that are happening next Tuesday and Wednesday, they will not set off an alarm before 10 o'clock. So, uh, and we do that, we do try to be sensitive. So this stuff with U.S. lawns uh, is something that I know Dennis will get on. Dennis mentioned something about work orders. I need to be clear. Um, Dennis is new. Dennis wants to make a great impression. He wants to serve and make you all happy. Please don't call him and ask him to do something that you haven't put a work order in because it tempts him because he's going to want to make you happy. And then if he just starts doing that for a couple of you, more and more are going to come. And he's going to be spending his time as a director doing little things and the work order system is going to blow up and become inconsequential. So call Dennis. If you put a work order in and nobody has done anything in a week, uh, call Dennis and let him know, hey, my work order's been in and it hasn't been addressed in, in, a, in a week. Can you please check on it? That, that's what I need the call to go to the director for. Does that make sense? Um, and if you call Dennis uh, and then a week, you've, after a week you've called Dennis and he hadn't done anything and your work order still isn't done, after week two, pick up the phone and call, hey, Ben, I called Dennis last week. Uh, I'm calling you this week. It's been two weeks. My work order hasn't been done. And nobody's told me why it hasn't been done. So please call me as well. Uh, we're happy. We want to make you happy. We want this work order system that is, is new. We put it in this year. Uh, we want it to continue to take root and really uh, be able to serve us because we can look on that and see how long it's taken us to close work orders, what's still open and why and those kinds of things. So it is a very important tool um, and it's getting better and better. Uh, we just have to make sure we don't create any false pathways, right Dennis? Okay, at this point, I'll bring up Heather Pruitt, our Life Enrichment Director. Heather. Good morning, everybody. I have just a few updates today. Uh, first, I want to say that I appreciate everyone's patience as the hot tub has been out of order. Uh, recently, we found that a part uh, needed to be replaced, and we were able to fix that issue. Um, however, now we're working to resolve another one. Um, I don't have a date that will be open at this time, but we are working as diligent as possible, making sure the chemicals will uh, maintain at a proper balance once we do open it up. Um, currently, the aquatic classes, the instructor is demonstrating exercises on the deck. Due to the current COVID cases, the instructors are not allowed to get in the water at this time with you. I'm sorry about that. A request was also made to shorten the gym therabands, and that has been completed. Um, so if you have any questions or concerns with them, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, the Strength and Stability 2 class over the past year has been 30 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 10.15 to 10.45. Uh, we'll be trialing a 45-minute class on Wednesdays, and that'll be from 10.15 to 11. As far as the gym uh, in the Pines, the recumbent bike over there, it was skipping a while back and I told you that we were looking into that. We did find that the tension rod needed to be tightened and since then we did fix it, but it's skipping again. We're gonna replace the belt on that so we are looking a little bit further into it. There has also been an armrest chair added to the gym up there. There was a request, they have two up there now I believe without armrests, but that has been fixed and resolved. 
As we discussed before, we have updated the liability waivers for the Wellness Center. You must have a new waiver signed if you're going to have a guest attend any of the wellness amenities. And that includes the pool, the gym, and any fitness classes. So please let me know if you need a new waiver. And I'll be happy to get it to you, put it at the front desk, whatever we need to do. But I will need that back. Uh, also, uh, if you uh, need help getting familiar with the gym equipment again, if you need your HER card updated, if you need the sets, weight, repetitions, anything added, if you're getting stronger and you need that weight bumped up, there's little tickets by that HER computer. Just write that. You can put it on my desk. You can let me know. Um, and then same thing if you also have questions regarding the fitness classes don't hesitate to let me know. You can call me at extension 8630. You can email me or you can stop by my office. I'm right across from the aerobics room. But again, if I'm not in there, I'm probably buzzing around somewhere helping in another area. But please let me know if you have any questions by any of those means. Any questions? None? Okay. You're welcome. Real quickly, we had the case of a missing clock. We were going to ask you all, if you all took the clock, please return it from the pool. Um, but we found it today. So um, we realized who took it. It was staff person trying to fix it. Speaking of the clock, though, this is uh, the, the fall back weekend. So don't forget to set your clocks back, those of you that still have manual clocks. Um, and the reason I jumped up here to say something stupid about the clock is, I need to switch Phil and Teresa. So Phil, I know you have an appointment at 11.30 and uh, you got to get on a phone call in just a minute. So um, if you want to come up and talk, Phil McManus, our new dining director. All righty. Morning again, everybody. So we're now in day six of 68 days of holidays. It started Sunday with Halloween and it ends on the 12th day of Christmas. And I don't know about y'all, but it's amazing how in January, my washer and dryer shrinks my clothes. Anybody else have that problem? Okay. Only in the wintertime it happens. That's it, though. Uh, we have a new dining manager coming to the NRC. Her name is Lynn Cuba. Uh, she came in Wednesday for a quick tour and met with our executive staff here. And she'll be starting on November 15th, which is a week from Monday. So we'll bring her around and introduce you to her, her primary Objective is to make sure everyone at the NRC is eating correctly and doing their thing over there. I will bring you around and to meet you there. This Sunday, we'll start our new menu cycle. So you'll see some menus, new foods coming in. Uh, the food committee got their look of it at the prior meeting a week and a half ago. Haven't heard any bad things about it, which is always good. So we'll start that Sunday during the uh, meal hour for that time. Uh, this coming month also is Thanksgiving. Everybody ready for Thanksgiving? I sure am. That will be the 25th. We'll be having it in our dining room, of course. Uh, it'll be buffet style. It'll be from 11 to 2. And we are please taking reservations for that. Not quite sure what the steps are for doing those reservations. I'm sure we'll have details for that later on to do that. What I know that we have guests and other people who come and visit us during the holiday time. So I wanted to throw this out as an option to you. Uh, for years, I like to go to the fresh market down here and shop. But as you notice that during the holidays, they'll have an option where you can actually buy your meal from them and pick it up and then take it home and, and have it with your family. So we kind of want to have that same option here for you. Not everybody wants to eat from 11 to 2 on Thanksgiving. And some people may have a lot of guests and family members that come in. So we're going to give you the chance to order your meal for however, how many people you need. And we'll package it for you, have it ready, and maybe even deliver it to your room for you, for you and your family and your guests to enjoy in your cottages and your apartments. And you can have that uh, anytime you like. So we're going to see if we can get that organized too. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, we'll probably have some more information about that, how you can do that. Um, as far as for the dining room reservations, uh, we're hoping to get everybody reserved no later than noon on Wednesday the 24th. So if you can please let us know how many you will have coming, what time you want to come have our Thanksgiving meal, which is going to be an incredible meal. I've already seen the menu. They can be very happy with it. 
So by noon on Wednesday the 24th, please have your reservations in for us so we can get everybody seated properly. Uh, the grill, has anybody, everybody been liking the grill? Have us been option, given the option for dinner? We'll continue to do that. Um, as you can see that, that there, people have been enjoying that. There's a lot of folks going to the grill. So we may see about doing some labor swaps as far as getting some more people over there when it gets busier and busier. But we will continue to do the grill as we have been doing. Um, as you know, we're coming up on Christmas time, so you'll be seeing and smelling lots of cookies and things such as that. So if you have any orders or any activities going on which you will need cookie trays for, I'm sure Teresa will have information for that later on and how to do that, but we're looking for a very happy, healthy, and very harmonious holiday period. Any questions you have for me? Yes. We're going to put out some information on that. We hopefully will get everyone who would like to do the pre-order dinner for pickup. Uh, probably looking at maybe no later than Monday or Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. That way we can know how many to prepare for and how we can lay the dining room out. And also packaging is important because this is a pretty big dinner we have coming out to you. So it's going to take a little while to get all the courses wrapped up nice and neatly for you so you can enjoy them with your families in your places where you like to have your meal. But we'll make sure we have that information to you very soon. In the, in the dining room. Okay, yes. Uh, to clarify that, thank you, Ben, is that you're allowed to have up to four guests coming to dine with you in the dining room. However, if you want to have more than that coming in, there's the option where you can pre-order your meals and we can have them delivered to you or you can pick them up and have them in your apartments or cottages at your time and the fashion in which you like to have. Any other questions I can field right now? Yes. Uh, it, she asked if, the, if you don't have any guests, are you still required or recommended to make reservations? We're saying yes, please, if you would, simply because we want to make sure that we have enough seats for everyone so that a lot of people aren't waiting outside the door for people to leave, to get out. Therefore, if we can have, it'd be nice if we had two full seatings, one at 11, say one at 1230, but I know that may be difficult to deal with. But if we can have everyone please call for reservations, therefore we can have the least opportunity for a lot of chaos and a lot of clogging around the door and people waiting unneededly for seats. Anyone else? Yes. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> I wish I could take the credit for that one, but another location where I worked prior had that same option, and it was a lot of, a lot of uh, issues with, with seating and space, and I think it helped out really well. And, of course, we used to do it with Fresh Market quite a bit, too, so I think that was a good um, reference for me to use. Anyone else have any questions? No? Well, thank you. I think a lot of you have been talking to me back and forth on the halls and seeing me, so keep on doing that, and I'll make this place as happy and healthy and as good as I can make for you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Teresa Walco and I am the Arts and Education Manager. As Phil was talking, the holidays are coming and they are in full force. Um, so there's a lot going on for November and it's about to get a little crazier with December. So please be sure that you are reading your calendars. There is a front and the back, and on the back you're gonna find um, more further descriptions of some of those activities that we highlight. So there's just a few that I would like to bring to your attention this morning. Um, we're gonna have several military personnel that will be presenting in various ways over the course of Veterans Week. Um, so there's information about our speakers and they would like to hear from you and any questions that, they may that you may have about their um, work experience, so please get those to Heather. Um, she can be reached at 8630. We will have a Veterans Day performance Thursday, November 11th at 10 o'clock in the auditorium. We're going to have a bourbon tasting. Um, that's going to consist of bourbon and American whiskeys. It's going to be hosted by Hunter Johnson. He's a mixologist, co-owner of Lucky and Fortunato restaurants in downtown Roanoke. RSVPs are going to be required for this, and there are limited seats, so please give me a call at 8656. 
and that will be um, Tuesday, November 16th at 7. We've had several questions about the Saturday shopping. Um, David will stop at a variety of areas in Ridgewood, Tanglewood, 419, near the Forum, Clearbrook. Um, so he's happy to take you anywhere along that route. Just give him a heads up um, and let him know. We've had several um, comments, questions, concerns about the movie nights that happen on Tuesday and Saturday. Um, we've listened to several different sides on moving them virtual or in person. And at this time, we are gonna to continue to do them in person. As we continue to get into the colder months, um, it's important for us to be able to gather and socialize in ways that we can. Um, and this is an excellent opportunity for our independent living as well as assisted living um, residents to gather together. So we will be um, getting ready and decorating for Christmas closer towards and after Thanksgiving. So floor reps, if you would please let me know when you would like your trees delivered and fluffed and set up, but it's up to the residents to decorate this year. Um, and as Phil mentioned, we will have a cookie option, so please let me know about that as well. Thanks. Those of you that are new, we, the residents on each floor usually get together and put the tree up and decorate it, and then there's always something to eat. We've not had the opportunity to have cookies and punch and stuff like that, but we will this year. So it doesn't mean we can do it for everything, but we're, we will be able to do it this year for the, the holiday season, and we're very excited about that, that it's, again, um, hopefully uh, infection control. We'll be able to manage it well, but it's, it's very exciting to be able to do that. And uh, having decorated one, uh, I think a second or third floor dogwood I did last year. I'm sorry, dogwood. Uh -huh. You can have a little better tree this year. Uh, more professionally done, hopefully. Um, but we're looking forward to the holiday season. Uh, Teresa's really working hard to get that lined up. We had a big meeting, several big meetings recently about that. At this point, uh, Beth Herndon, our resident services director. Beth, and thank you for running around with the microphone, too. Appreciate that. Good morning. So as many of you know, a few weeks ago, we had a disruption with our landlines. And we realized that you may not have some important cell phone numbers that you need to have. So in the next few weeks, I'll be delivering these small cards that have the cell phone numbers for security, for Dennis, our facilities director, for Ben, myself, and Angel with transportation. So. I made these cards small so that you can keep them in your wallet or purse or back pocket. I don't care where you keep it as long as you know where to find it if the landlines ever go down again and you need to contact one of us. So along with those cards, I will be delivering uh, vehicle information forms so for you to update. It's really important that we keep that information um, up to date in your file. Next, we have a new area code coming. So as of May 14th, we will have a second area code. It's 826. And um, on May 14th, you'll have to start dialing the area code plus the phone number. So what this means is your phone number that you have right now will not change. However, if you decide to change your phone number, then you could be given the 826 area code. And lastly, um, some of you have already met Earl LaPrade, um, but for those of you who haven't, he is our newest member of our transportation team. So unfortunately, he can't be with us today, but he's very excited to be here and excited to get to meet you all. So that's all I have. Anybody have any questions? Beth probably should have reminded everybody not to abuse those cell phone numbers that you're going to be getting. <laughs> Sounds like a fun time to me. Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Carter Hanna, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Brandon Oaks. Um, we had four closings during the month of October. 
Susan Tobiasen moved into apartment 124. I know she was here on Monday. Is she here again? Susan, do you want to stand? I know you just stood on Monday, but will you stand again? Welcome, Susan. Um, Al and Kathy Edwards, are you all here this morning? Oh, Al and Kathy, will you all stand up as well, please? So Al and Kathy moved into the first floor um, on Halloween. So um, they moved into 135, and so the first floor has been really busy. Um, in addition to that, I do not believe Bruce is here this morning. Is Bruce here? No. So, um, and then Bruce moved into 143, as well as Karen Hammond moved into apartment 243. Is Karen here? I don't think she was going to be able to be here either. Okay, great. Well, hopefully, if you have not gotten a chance to meet those folks, please do get out and welcome them to Brandon Oaks. Um, we will have several other move-ins. Um, we've got another move-in, a closing happening on Tuesday for the Dogwood. So, Dogwood, it's your turn next. You'll have some moving trucks over in that area, um, which I know you all will be excited to welcome those folks. Um, everybody should have also received an invitation to an event that we're hosting on November 17th. That is an internal event. That is for if you have a friend or a church member or a loved one that we are not currently actively working within our marketing database that you would like to have come and uh, have lunch with us, we would love for you to be able to do that. We have a lot of people already signed up who are bringing church members and friends that want to learn a little bit more about Brandon Oaks, but um, want to be able to do it with their friends. Uh, so if you have not already done that, please come by and see Lisa, Christy, or myself. If you're not sure if we're currently actively working them, let us know, and we can check that in the database. So hopefully a few more people can sign up for that. And um, I think that's all I have. Yes. Uh, the 17th of November. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. Have a great weekend. As you can see, it's been a full agenda today. Um, you will, as Beth said, you will get these uh, little uh, notes with uh, our cell phone numbers on it. When I was a kid, the going joke was you'd call somebody and you'd answer the phone and somebody would say, is your refrigerator's running? Yeah, well, go catch it before it gets away. Or hey, this is even really old school. Do you have Sir Walter Raleigh in a can? Yeah, you better let him out before he suffocates. Sir Walter Raleigh in a can, pipe tobacco. That's, a, that's really old school. Um, yeah, I do not want to get any smart Alex calling me, you know, at 2 in the morning. But one of you might do it, but uh, if, if somebody does, I know it would probably be this one down here, but uh, uh, on my staff. <laughs> but uh, folks, we have a lot going on, a lot of very good and exciting things. Uh, we're real tickled to be going into the holiday season with a lot of momentum. If there's anything you need or anything that's not working right, please reach out and let us know, um, and we'll work on it and uh, try to get it rectified as soon as possible. Hope you have a great day, and if you have any questions, just give me a holler. Thank you. Take care.